Team QT gets exploited by Team 5 Stars, and it looks like they're not dead yet. And they didn't even get a black hole in that one, so maybe I was wrong. You can see from that engagement, the experience just dropped exponentially back towards a true even. And now we have a lull in the action yet again as most of the players from 5 Stars go back to the base to heal on the bottom lane, though. Continued farm from Stereo, and he is getting really close to finish out that Aghanims. That's going to be a great pickup for him. Certainly complements the lineup. But that team fight really slowed down the momentum for Team QT. And I didn't expect it to go that poorly, even if they did throw all their eggs in one basket and play over-aggressive. It was a staggered team fight, but picking off Enigma right off the bat and still losing an engagement like that, it definitely is surprising for Team QT. They did not expect that going into it. And they have to try and find a way to rebound from that. Now they might want to be a little bit more cautious, try and get a little more map control by putting aggressive wards and then try and get a free Roshan. It's probably the safest course of action for the time being. They could also smoke up and try and pick fights away from the enemy base, but they clearly cannot push on to that Tier 3 quite yet. Reeks do Zog and FLM all in the middle lane. We'll see if they're going to go into the jungle. They will. What happened to the gem? I wonder. Is it dead? Or was it stolen? They're going to pop off a smoke as I look for a gem. And it looks like it probably was killed as I don't see it anywhere. That may have been a while ago though. So no invis detection though. Now that the gem is gone. And they're going to have a tough time taking out Broodmother. Here they go. They're chasing down the courier but will not get in range of that. Instead, they're going to think about rotating to the middle lane, but that's an illusion. Kazers does show. He is real. And FLN, not going to catch anyone off here. The illusion is going aggressively into the river. Stereo going to pursue it, but of course, he should figure out it's a fake. Wants to kill it anyway. It's pretty important to take down your replicate illusion because they do perform a vital need for Morphling in terms of escapability and being an overall pain in the team fight. so... That's why people use skills to try and take him down. Middle lane, though. They're looking for some aggression. Kazus may be in trouble. The Reality Rift followed up with a Chaos Bolt. It's going to be two seconds. Toss him with the air with Telekinesis, but the Tornado comes out. Black Clover, Mr. Columbia, Zog, and FLN both stuck in it. Wait for him over. FLN taking a lot of damage. He's going to drop here. Oh, no. He pops off the mech, but he's just barely living. There he goes. Down goes FLN. Crystal Minion takes out Rubik. Oh, and Chaos Knight gets a kill on Invoker. Mr. Columbia making out with barely any health. Prestigay trying to get out low health as well. And the rest of Team QT back off. But I'm not Magori goes on top of Rigzu. Rigzu may be in trouble. I'm not Magori picks up that BKB as his first item, but decides not to use it there. Here it goes. Does he have enough damage to take him out? Another stun coming out right now, but he's going down. He pops the BKB and takes him out through it. And I'm not Magori securing good farm throughout the game. Not relenting, and he is at 131 for 2 in CS. Picks up his first kill of the game, and will continue to be an annoyance for Lena. She cannot overextend like that by herself. Has to definitely be a little bit more cautious now. And Mr. Columbia got a really big black hole in that last team fight, and you can see how much it influences the fight. And they weren't even able to kill off Rubik in the black hole because they have such a farm advantage for the time being on those two heroes, but they were able to put him in a position that really needed him to back off out of the fight and he wasn't able to go through his full array of skills. He wasn't able to steal off whatever he liked or target a specific skills to steal. So therefore, it made it a much more difficult fight for him. And they ended up winning that engagement. Now in the middle lane, Team QT grouping up yet again. We have a disconnect from Morphling, though. 8A out of the game. So they're going to pause for a moment here. And once again, I'd like to remind you that I am NY John casting this game. This is 5 Stars versus Team QT. This is Go for Dota, the Saturday Night Cup. Go check out GoForDota.com. They offer cups every week. Anyone can participate. They are for pride for the time being, but some of them off, um, from time to time do have a prize pool. So keep an eye on that. Join the site and participate because we'd love to have more teams, love to cast more games that the opportunity presented itself. And we surely are having a lot of fun today. And we're about to get back into this one. Resume is underway. Go call from both teams. And here we go. 
and the kill score gradually keeps evening, evening itself out as it's 18 to 13 now. Team QT and Team Five Stars, the gap is definitely diminishing. You can see over time the graph lowering, and this graph, whew, 360. And they're going to go towards the top lane. Do they have invis detection? Or are they going to try and go for the brood mother? That is an illusion. They do not have invis detection. Oh, they do. They have dust. So they get popped out of the smoke. They'll pop the dust and reveal. It's a common strategy. And instead, Kazers shows himself in the middle lane. And now Riksu going to go very forward. Throw off a stun. It's going to catch Kazers at the very end of it. Gale will follow. FLN to toss him up in the air. He gets hit by the reality earth. BKB popped by Zug. He jumps in. Mr. Columbia going to drop yet again before the team fight is underway. And that is big pickup. He has to buy back. And a necessary buyback. He doesn't have black hole up, though. And now Team QT will be content with that victory. And I suspect they'll back up. I don't think they'll try and get any more out of that. Especially with the BKB on cooldown from Zog. They should not try and press their luck there. Good engagement from them. One kill is all you need. The buyback really sets back Enigma. He's not anywhere close to pick up a BKB now. So while it seems like a minor victory, it actually is pretty significant. And now... It looks like a replicate is on the top lane. It's going to come in and may see these Team QT members in the jungle. Middle lane, we see 8A is here. He does have a replicate available, of course. Cage is in the area as well. Zog trying to set something up. Will he catch him off in time? The Russian is here. Tornado comes out. It's going to be a bait attempt. Riksu is baiting them. Cage is from the back end. It's going to get tossed in the air. Tokenesis. They're going to go on top of four seconds. Step for the Chaos Bolt. Laguna Blake down goes Kazers. 8A needs to back up. Mr. Columbia needs to back up. Prestigate pops up and ultimate gets a kill. Takes down the Russian and a black hole catches Riksu as well as Stereo as he jumps in. But he takes down Mr. Columbia and now I'm not Magori in the middle of the fight trying to do work. FLN cannot deal damage from Wally's the BKB up. But it's off now. Telekinesis tosses him in the air. Zog gonna try and finish him off. They do not have vision of him though. And he will get away with his life. Ends up being a straight two for two I believe. Crystal made him pick up a kill at the beginning of that team fight. A little bit unsuspected, but definitely a good move from her. And now they'll continue to pressure the middle lane or back off here. And like I said before, I think Roche is definitely the next option for Team QT. But these team fights are too even. There's a clock on the effectiveness of some of the Team QT heroes. And they don't want to fall into that stage of the late game where we see Morphlings perpetually be that powerhouse hero that just take over the game. He is only 1,100 gold away from finishing off a shotgun. Ethereal Blade will definitely change the pace of this game. So they need to keep up the pressure and needs to be effective. They can't afford to lose these engagements or even tie these engagements at this time. Riksu able to pick up a four step. It's 30 minutes and really good farm on the support heroes. I know I said that once or twice already, but you have to appreciate that. It's so important to get these key items up on support heroes. Now Zog may be in trouble in the jungle. It has to pop off the BKB. Should have probably TP'd immediately, but instead he's going to run. And he will make it out with his life. A Frost Nova comes out. Tornado will not hit. And now a Sonic Wave will not hit anybody. Oh, but Russian in the middle of the fight pops off an ultimate, but in a little bit of trouble, everyone else jumps in. He can be popped by Alna Magori. He's doing work on the Rixu. Rixu drops a Laguna Blade on Kazers. Kazers trying to back off. He's going to drop. FLN gets the final hit. Mr. Columbia taken out by the Scream of Bane. Morphling comes into the team fight. Skill stolen. Waveform over. FLN gets another kill. Crystal Maiden drops. Alna Magori trying to get out of the team fight. 8A is low health. Has to morph off strength here. And the Chaos Bolt is up in a couple seconds. Reality Rep. He waveforms over. Waveform will be up in a moment, though, for FLN, but he gets out of the team fight and TP out for Mama. I'm not Magori as well. So get out of there safely. But once again, a team fight in favor. Oh, that one is actually in favor of Team QT when it's all said and done. But still, they weren't able to make anything of it. And. I'm not sure. Enigma just can't get off black holes. He didn't have it up on the cooldown. So you have to question their aggression a little bit. You want to time your aggression with your own cooldowns when it's possible. But in that circumstance, they didn't have black hole available. And that is a very important, especially on a team that's behind in farm. You have to maximize the utility of your skills. So something to keep an eye on 
four or five stars. And um, I'm not Magori. Already has had a great game on Enigma. Or a pretty solid game on Enigma. He was a little bit reluctant in one of the games to use the black hole on one target. But towards the end of the game, he was dominating. So can't really criticize his play that much. And in fact, his whole team was there. So you could see why they want to be a little bit aggressive. As they don't want to just let... Team QT get up those key items like that Aghanim Scepter. In fact, Queen of Pain's farm has really stagnated since she picked up that Aghanim Scepter. She's 337 now, 149 for 7 on CS, and really could be doing better off the start she had. She was really powerful early on, and now is definitely stagnating. So that's something to be a little worried about if you're Team QT. At 33 minutes, you really are expecting two items on that hero. She does have an ultimate arm now, but still definitely behind expectations. So one thing going in favor of five stars, perhaps. Middle lane, they'll kill an illusion. Zog's farm, however, hasn't really stopped. It has a nice, consistent flow throughout the game. And at 3,200 gold, we'll see if he wants to pick up something like a heart next. Gold per minute will show us that the leader in the game is, in fact, that menacing Morphling. And Morphling has finished off his ethereal blade. So something to watch out for. He could blow somebody up. In fact. Maybe a lot of trouble for Lena. Here comes the tornado. Zog comes in. BKB popped. FLM BKB popped. In the middle of a fight. So many BKBs. The black hole catches off two heroes. Zog and FLM are in the middle of it, but they have no damage to compound on it. Mr. Columbia is going to be in trouble. And his team has let him down. He goes down there. And another black hole stolen up by FLN. 8A going to go down. A three for one trade. Five stars losing that engagement. And on the back end of it, it looks like Team QT are going to get the Roche that they've been looking for for so long now. And then feel a little bit more comfortable being aggressive and going towards that base. Nice black hole. They just didn't have anyone else there to help deal damage. And with those BKBs popped, it's a real issue. Not able to deal that much damage to them. So, it's looking like Dire Straits for Team 5 Stars. Radiance bottom tower is and they played all... All day, or at least they played three games. This is the third game I've seen them in, and they played well in all three. So hopefully, they can find a way to try and bring this one back. But I have to say, this is the first time I've seen Team QD, QT, excuse me, and I am definitely impressed. A lot of teams misuse a Chaos Knight. They don't play him right. There's a mix of aggression plus securing stable farm, and it looks like Team QT know how to execute with him, as he is at 408 gold per minute, and really just more more of a nuisance in the team fight than anything else with those illusions up with those crits and the stuns every so often he really is just tough to take down and hard to deal with and morphling does have the ethereal blade but it's going to take more than just morphling in these team fights broodmother has a yasha now so hopefully she can try and amp up her damage enigma meanwhile 90 seconds till he has another black hole up but his farm is obsolete we could see 214 gold per minute on enigma and that is not what you want out of that trade you had a jungling enigma and he got up the mech pretty early but since then his farm has just died and it's not necessarily his fault at all but poor circumstances for mr columbia and really 35 minutes a lot of these heroes are looking at item sets that they should have had around 20 minutes and just really have been slowed down from the aggressive play of Team QT, Morphling being the exception, obviously. On the bottom lane, the Illusion will get spotted off. The Russian still looking for an eventual pipe, but it looks like it's a long ways away. Rigsdu sitting on the same items, deciding to get some more Invis detection. Oh, he replicates in, and a cocky move from Ada. Hey, he may have to pay for it. He's going to shrink move as much as he can. Let Zog's in the area. He's going to try to TP up, but he drops. Oh, and they'll take that trade all day, any day. Team QT. Oh, a cocky play from 8A. Taking a note out of the competitive booklet. The other day, I think we saw Complexity, perhaps. Or was it Pot and Bottom? One of the players on one of the North American teams did that same thing. Jumping into the middle of a whole team, shotgun someone and getting out. But 8A could not quite get out. And... A rare flaw from an otherwise very strong carry player. And we'll see what Team QT can do to try and exploit this. As they do have Heart up on Chaos Knight now. The Aegis is on Rubik, so we'll see how he does. If they want to try and push into the base.
Meanwhile, we do have some counter pressure as Kazer